Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, you will learn how you can actually delete images from external or scoped storage and how you can modify those in general, especially on API levels 29 and 30, because on these levels, things changed quite a bit. So essentially, the, the things that changed is that on API, API level 29 and onwards, you need the user's approval to delete a photo or a file in general that your app doesn't own. So in case we make, an, make a photo here with our app, then we own that photo because our app made that and then we can delete that without the user's permission. But if we want to delete a photo that the user, for example, made with their normal camera app, then the user needs to approve that now. So the left device here is API level 28 and the right device is API level 30. So here I actually made two photos on each devices. The dog is actually a photo that I made with this camera here. So in our app, we own these dog photos here. So it shouldn't be a problem to, to delete these. Let's try that on API level 28, long click and the dog is deleted, that works fine. Let's try it here on API level 30. Long click on the dog and we can delete it. Everything is working perfectly fine. Now the cat was made with uh, the external camera app. So this app does not own this photo. Let's try to long click on that here. You can see no problems on API level 28 because on API, API level 28 and below, we didn't have scope storage. But if we want to try that here in API level 30, where we have scope storage, which was introduced in level 29, where you can actually opt out of. So if you target apps on API level 29, then you can opt out of scope storage that you don't use it. But if you target apps um, with API level 30, then you also need to use it on API level 29. So what happens if we now long click on this cat here, then you can see we now need to approve that deletion basically. So we either have that deny or allow option. If we click on allow, then the photo is deleted. So those are actually the major differences here we have with scope storage and not scope storage. So back in our Android Studio project, if you don't have the source code, check out this video's description. You will find my GitHub repository where you can get this initial source code if you didn't follow along this playlist. What we want to do first is we want to have another of these activity result launches here. Because the way this will work when we need the user's approval to delete an image is we will have an intent sender. And with that intent sender, well, we can send an intent and the intent will be just to um, show that approval dialog. And for that, we will just have a private late init variable, intent sender launcher which is an activity result launcher of an intent sender request. Uh, then let's scroll down and write our function to actually delete a photo in external storage. Private suspend function delete photo from external storage, which will take the photo URI. So the URI we want to delete. And in here we will have with context blog as usual. We want to switch to the IO dispatcher. And then we will have a try and catch block. Because what we want to catch here are security exceptions. This deletion on API level 28 and below is extremely easy. We just need to use our content resolver again content resolver dot delete. Here we pass the URI, which is our photo URI. And we could specify a where clause so that we just delete a bunch of URIs that match a specific condition. We don't have that here. We just want to delete our single URI. So we pass null for these two. And what will now happen when we are at, at API level 29 and onwards? In that case, this won't work because on these devices, we don't have permission to delete an external photo, at least in case um, this URI does not belong to our app. If it does, then this will also succeed on 29 and 30. If it is not a photo that we own, a security exception will be thrown instead. And now it gets complicated because on AP level 29 and onwards, this security exception will actually be a so-called recoverable security exception. And this recoverable security exception 
will contain a so-called intent sender, which I talked about, with which we can actually request that deletion dialog. But if we are on API level 30 and not on 29, then there is another way to delete photos, and that is using media store delete request. With that, we can actually delete a bunch of URIs, or rather request to delete a bunch of URIs. On API level 29, we can't do that. There we can only request a single photo to be deleted by the user. So I want to get that intent sender we are interested in using a when expression if our build at version SDK int is greater than or equal to build that version codes that are so API level 30 what we want to assign to that intent sender in this case is media store dot create delete request. You can also see there is create trash request so we could also put the photo in trash where the user can recover it for I think 30 or 60 days or there's also create favorite request to yeah just like a specific photo or create a write request. We will uh, use create delete request which will return a pending intent. Here we pass the content resolver and a list of URIs we actually want to delete. So as I said, on API level 30, we have the option to request multiple URIs here to delete. We only have one, so we just pass a list with our photo URI. And then, since that is a pending intent and not an intent sender, we refer to the intent sender of that pending intent. Then, if we have build.version SDK int greater than or equal to um, Q, so API level 29, then we get this recoverable security exception I talked about. So we actually need to take our security exception and cast it as a recoverable security exception. So val recoverable security exception is equal to our security exception as question mark recoverable security exception. And then using that exception, we can get the intent sender. So recoverable security exception, user action, action intent, dot intent sender. And else we will just assign null to our intent sender. And now in case there is something saved in that intent sender, so either this case was true or this case, then we want to fire off that intent. So we say intent sender, dot let, that a name of sender and use our intent sender launcher now to launch that with an intent sender request which we can request uh, construct here intent sender request dot builder where we pass our sender the dot build and this will now launch the dialog where the user can allow that deletion or deny it and then let's go to uncreate and initialize that intent sender launcher Let's say here, let's, let's do it rather here. Intent sender launcher is equal to register for activity result. The contract is re activity result contracts dot start intender, intent sender for result and then open curly braces. And here we get that activity result. So the result of that intent sender or that intent rather. So if the user actually um, allowed that deletion or not. So if it dot result code is result okay, then that means we successfully deleted the photo, the user approved that. So we can just show toast. Let's just copy this from down here. Photo deleted successfully. Copy this and paste it for the else case and just change the text to photo couldn't be deleted. And then we can scroll up to our external storage photo adapter. And in here we just call delete photo from external storage. We pass it that content URI. And I think we need to launch that in a routine. So lifecycle scope that launch. And we just put this in there. So basically just when we long click on this photo, this will be triggered. So then we just delete the photo. So now I have launched these apps on uh, API level 28, the very left one. The middle one is API level 29 and the right one is API level 30 because I want to show you something. 
If we delete a photo on 28, then that just works fine. If we delete a photo on API level 30, then we need to allow that to our app, click allow, and the photo will be deleted. If we do that on API level 29, you can see that's kind of a different dialog. If we click on allow, you can see photo deleted successfully, but the photo is still there. And that is the total stupidity of Android storage <laughs> nowadays. I have no idea why they handled it like that, but essentially what happens here is that on API level 29, if we have that storage dialog, with that dialog we just grant permission and we don't delete the, the photo if we click on allow. That is totally stupid. On API level 30 it's different. On API level 28 it's different. I have no idea what these Android guys actually thought when they did that. Maybe I'm wrong here, maybe I do something wrong, but if we actually long click on this photo again, then you can see now we can delete it without that dialog because we granted that permission before. So we somehow need to deal with that special case in our app when we're on API level 29 and we delete a photo. So let's go back to our code. What I will do is I will create a variable for the deleted image URI. So just the URI of the photo that we are about to delete. Private variable deleted image URI is a nullable URI. Then when we delete that photo here in our shared photo adapter, we assign that current URI to our deleted image URI. So deleted image URI is equal to it.content URI. And then in our intent sender launcher, if that deletion was successful, if the user clicked on allow, we want to check if the build.version.stkint is equal to build.versioncodes.q. Here it's important that you use equals and not greater than, because we only want this for API level Q. In that case, we launch a coroutine in lifecycle scope, and we just call our delete function again, uh, delete photo from external storage, and here we pass our deleted image query. If that's null, we just return out of launch. So basically what we do is we just save that deleted image query so that if we are on API level 29 and the, we actually clicked on allow, then we just call our delete function again because then we have approval for that and then it will be deleted right afterwards. So that will now work, try it out. And that is actually it for this playlist. I really hope you enjoyed it. If so, please give it a like, comment below. And also, if you have any suggestions for future playlists, just let me know below. I would be really happy if you will check out my upcoming Android WebSocket course using Ktor. We will make a Ktor multiplayer game basically based on WebSockets. It will be a scribble game. So one player draws something, the others need to guess what it is. Players can join rooms. So much cool stuff. I will launch that course soon here, just that's in your mind already. Um, yeah, you will, you will hear of that when I actually launch it. Have an awesome day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.